Hey, I just started an Etsy store. It's a place where people sell art. Everything I do on there is handmade. Everything is original, straight from my head. I'm sure y'all will like it. You know, I'm keeping the prices reasonable. I ain't trying to bust nobody head or nothing. So, if y'all can go through and support, appreciate it, man. Thank y'all so much for all the support now. The link to the shop is right down here in the comment box. I'm going to put it right there and pin it right up top. So right where you see the top comment at, click the link to the shop right there. And I'm also got the link down here in the description box under the video. Appreciate y'all, man. Make sure you like the video. Ring the bell. Only 22% of people have uh, rung the bell. Let's show YouTube that we love her for. <laughs> What's up, horror family? I hope everybody out there doing good. Just came through to uh, spend a little time with y'all, talk a little bit about what been going on, tell you about a little story I, somebody sent me and stuff. So I hope everybody out there doing good. I hope everybody, uh, you know, hope everything's smooth and all that. You know, happy to all. Uh, be here happy to be in position to do what i do you know it's amazing it's a blessing but anyway uh the channel been doing good youtube channel doing good you know it, it it could be doing better i gotta make sure you hit the like button i don't know what you do when you go to other folk house but before you come up in my house you gotta ring that doorbell man ring the bell Hit the like button. Just don't walk off all up in my spot, but you let me know you're coming in, you know? Anyway, I don't just ask for likes because it look good. I ask them because that's the only way YouTube going to push um, hood horror. And then, you know, obviously YouTube think that this channel ain't all that because <laughs> if they thought I was all that, they will push me more, but they don't push me a lot, so I'm going into year in August, make year number three, man. August the tenth is the hood horror third year, so you know it's uh I need y'all help, so <laughs> you know I got an Etsy store for y'all that ain't seen that yet. Etsy a place where you sell art, sell antiques and stuff. So I done sold uh sold about four paintings so far so you know for any of y'all that want to support black artists you can support in the etsy store there go the link right there now also twitch for the folks who are um, you know not familiar with you hi not familiar but i run a twitch stream twitch.tv slash hood horror you know, my Twitch stream is, it usually go 24-7. Every now and then, I might break it up, or it might get, re it might have to, you know, I might stop, depending on what it is. But sometimes I run it 24-7. So, but now I'm going live on the Twitch. So, I'm hoping that, uh, you know, I get more interactions and stuff. But it's doing good. I got like 80 followers, so it's better than what I used to have. Alright. It seemed like folks love hearing about Slender Man. I don't call I ain't talking about Slender Man. Slender Man is is different than Slender Man. Slender Man is a crackhead in a suit that he stole from the cleaners. Slender Man a little bit different, man. He got different rules. You know, some folks say he's supernatural. Some folks say that he uh you know, just uh a crackhead in a suit, man. I ain't never seen them, you know. So, uh, I just go off what I was, you know, what I'm told. But it's like one of them little urban legend things, man. Um, one of them hood urban legends, man, that don't get enough coverage, man, you know. Always, folks always cover the urban legends from the rural area, you know, the out there in the sticks and stuff, out there in the country, man. But it's a lot of urban legends right here in uh, right here in the cities, man, that folk don't cover. So this story was sent to me and it's uh, talking about this man and uh, 
and, and what he got, what he do, what he got going on. And uh, this guy said that it's a true story. Now, I, I asked y'all last time how many of y'all believed in Slender Man, and it looked like... <sighs> It, it it looked like I would say seventy five or eighty percent didn't believe in him, and then a few people who did, and it seemed like the only reason people did is because they believe anything is possible. Or I put it like this: whatever you believe in, whatever you believe in, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> you know. It is what it is. If folk believe in ghosts, if you believe in ghosts, ghosts exist. You believe in God, God exists. If you believe in um Let me think of something else people believe in. If you believe in that that uh Look, whatever. I don't know why I'm coming to. I'm Israeli shouting. If you believe, whatever you believe in is true. That's just the bottom line to it, man. I remember one time this old guy told me he was at job. He was at the job and he was talking about God or something. And uh, somebody came up to him and was like, "God don't exist." And he was like, "Huh?" He said, "God does not." exist and the guy said and what the old guy said he was like uh god don't exist he said yeah he don't exist well i'm gonna tell you he said well tell me how he don't exist he said i'm gonna tell you and before he told him he said but wait a minute how you gonna tell me about something that don't exist <laughs> anyway so the story go like this. He said, the other night I was on my way home after leaving work. And it was way darker than usual. Let me put it up. It was way darker than usual because some of the street lights weren't working. I'm not sure why because it wasn't raining or anything. And I ain't had no car so I was forced to walk to the bus stop. Which was about half a mile down from my job. Sometimes a co-worker would give me a ride, but most nights I had to be the last one to leave because I did the end of the day inventory. I've been working here for about six years, I think, and I hated every second of it, but it's the best job I ever had as far as the pay goes, so I try not to complain too much. My last check had some overtime on it because they forced us to work Saturday, so it was the biggest check I ever had. I think it was about $600. Shit, that's a nice check in the warehouse, y'all. <laughs> that's a nice little check right there. I ain't gonna lie to you. I ate good that night, but all since then, I just then had a bad feeling about coming to work. I try to get my mind right before I come in. You know, talk to yourself over and over again in your head. Trying to reason with yourself about how much you need the job and how good the job has been to you. But no matter what, I still hate coming here every day. They gave us a bonus today, a little $15 gift card for Walmart. But that ain't nowhere near enough to make me want to keep going to that warehouse every day. This man, this some real stuff right here, because it takes so much to. I, I can't. I don't know, but I know for me, it take everything I got to talk myself into getting ready to go to work. I got a dang near. <laughs> I got a dang near getting the huddle like I'm playing, getting ready to go out on the football field or something, man. It take everything in the world to get up, man. To it take everything in the world to lay down the night before. Then, oh man, I, shoot, I ain't gonna even know. <laughs> I felt that. I felt that for real. And he said, maybe I just be complaining. Um, if I am my bad, but dang man, unless you've been in my shoes, you are not gonna understand. Imagine being on the bus for an hour and a half. Then walking about a half mile and being on your feet for 10 hours. Then walking back to the bus 
and riding the bus for another hour and a half just to get home. I want another job, but by the time I get home, I don't have the energy to do nothing. And that's five days a week. But then they got the audacity to throw a, a Saturday in, too. So I ain't got time to do interviews and stuff because I can't afford to take a day off. If I take a day off, that's a $100 loss. And I can't afford to take an L like that. I lost $5 at the laundromat the other day. And I was ready to lock the door and trap everybody in there until I found out who picked up my money out the machine I was using. He ain't lying, boy. Shoot. Sure. I done got a little bit. Let me see. How much that money I could lose without freaking out? I'd be okay with a dollar. I'd be all right about five. I could live with ten. Could I lose twenty dollars without? Yeah, I could lose twenty. Because if you go out and buy some food you don't like, you probably spent about fifteen, twenty on it. You know, so. I, I could, you know, it'd been times I done bought some food. Like, I done bought ribs. And, yeah, like, you know, when you got a slab of rib, man, that just be like 20 at least. Uh, 20 to 25 dollars. So, I done bought ribs that I didn't like. So, I could live with that. 50, 40, okay, 40 dollars, 50. I know 50 dollars. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna die, but I would be close to it. <laughs> Yeah. Ronnie came a long way because it was a day when, when sure, it was a day when I could have lost a couple of quarters and been ready to just throw in the towel, man. <laughs> anyway, uh, so anyway, on my way to the bus stop, a bunch of uh, thoughts was running through my head what I could do to change my situation and what am I supposed to do differently. All this crazy stuff just, you know, running through my head. Then the more I was thinking, the more I started thinking about where I could get a big payday from. Then it hit me. My job got everything I need right up there at the warehouse. We got metal and copper pipes, cabling, and everything comes in from different manufacturers. And we store it at the warehouse and send stuff to different construction companies when they order it for a project. I count up what we sold for the day and what we need to order, and I keep a tally of everything on paper like it's 1952. So it's easy for me to get a bundle of copper wire out of there and take it to the scrapyard. And they pay like 4 or $5 a pound for copper. These bundles like 20 or 25 pounds a piece. That's like $100 right there. I can grab one of them every day. Now look, you know... I know it. I used to do that. I used to do that, man. I used to drive. Um, I used to drive a bus, right? And at the bus shop, they would be uh, taking the uh, the brakes, and you know they'd be taking the brakes off the bus. And and buses got these big old brake drums, like big, like big enough to put my head in. Like if I put it over my head, it's like a big bell shaped thing. And if I could put it over my head, you know that mug big. And it's heavy, man. And uh, they'd be taking them off and then taking the little brake calipers off. And uh, the caliper, like the thing to press down on the brake to make it um, push up against the drum to stop the bus. It's like it squeezed on the side of it. And that's how you get the bus to stop. So they used to put them out. When they got done with them, I guess they made a head of a truck or something that came and got them. So I, what I do, I get there real early before anybody get there. I get there early than a mug where the sun ain't even up. Or either real late after everybody gone. I had this 1994 Buick Roadmaster, man. That car was big enough to put me and about five, six big girls in it all at one time. <laughs> And well, you know, I don't make cars like that no more, man. That mug was so big. You could put, like, when I used to do um, summer camps and stuff with it, man, that'd be like, we'd be in there like, uh, we'd be in there like, like deep. Well, I'm talking about, uh, it'd be four, four, it'd be four of us in the front seat, about seven of us in the back seat, man. <laughs> yeah, that, that was a big cop there. So I'd go in there and I'd load that mug down, boy. 
I'll be the pussy. Man, I'll be it. I'll pull up real quick. I'll at least take my brother with me sometime. i pull up real quick. I'll be throwing uh, drums and break drums and that. Bam, bam. Throwing them in there. You know, I have them in the back seat. I have them on the floor. I have them in the trunk. I hit them up. Then uh, go to the scrapyard and they gave like $12 a piece for them. So 12, shoot, I have about 10 of them. That was nice, boy. Man, that was a pay, boy. That was a good little payday right there, especially at that time, because they ain't paid no money on that job. I think I was making like 1800 a month, 16 or 1800 a month. So I wasn't making no bread. I was making, so, so anytime I, man, look, I was driving one time. And um, I had folk on the bus, so I tried to hurry up, get them off the bus. I done turned the bus back around because I saw a hot water heater <laughs> sitting on the side of the road, man. Man, I got them folk off that bus, and man, turned back around, grabbed that hot water heater, threw it on the bus, and took the bus back to the station, pulled my car up right next to it, and threw the, uh, and transitioned that mug smooth, <laughs> Right to my car. Then went straight to the scrapyard. I was mad though, bro. I only got like uh I think I only got like twelve dollars for that thing. Ten dollars or something, man. I never even cashed a check, man. I just held on to the check for like a whole year. I was so upset. I done done all that sneaking in the middle of the day and for a dang ten dollar thing, that you know, how I need a big like that thing big time. You know what I mean? I'm thinking I done I thought I hit the jackpot, man. <laughs> anyway. So, yeah, I feel him on that, man. So, I met my cousin. My cousin, my uncle, my brother, man. We used to ride. We used to, man, we would sit around. We'd be so bored and broke. We started driving around talking about we going to my uncle. Talking about he going to start a junk business, man. So, we all jump up in his van and riding around looking for some junk, man. <laughs> Yeah, we seen the little railroad. They got this railroad yard, and we you can't you can kind of see it from the street, and uh, you can but you can't see it. You can see it, but you can't really see it. See it, but you can see it. And uh, man, we just seen metal big, and we was like, man, we need to go down to that railroad yard. But you know, my uncle them they too old. And they ain't wanna. He got a family, so he ain't trying to go to jail. Or, Get no big ticket for um, stealing from the railroad. But anyway, so that's for y'all that don't understand. That's the junk man. You know, y'all, some of y'all might not understand. That's what the junk man do. But anyway, he was like, the problem was once I started, I couldn't stop. It was like an addiction. I would come back. I'd come to work and make $100 for the day. Then I'd grab me some metal and make another 100 or so off that. It was easy. I could just put it in my book bag and walk right out and nobody would see me because I was the last one to leave and they was too old to put security cameras in. I was so happy with the extra money. I can come to work with a smile on my face from ear to ear. I was doing extra work, cleaning up after folks, whatever it took to keep the peace at work so everybody could get out of their own time. And I had plenty of time to get my little after work care package. I didn't feel bad at all, because it really ain't my fault. It's the job fault. How you going to pay somebody $10 an hour to work for 10 hours a day in this big old warehouse? Got me loading trucks and stuff with a paddy jack, because it's only one forklift. Then they only let the old guys use the forklift. It's only 20 employees doing all the work in this big old warehouse, so I know they could pay us some decent money. Then they got the nerve to ask why people quitting so much. I'm like, of course folks gonna quit when they can find a job that's easy and still find more money somewhere else. Hey, lucky I don't go get my uncle to go get a truck and come up in here and clean this place out one good time. There's so much stuff in here and the place so big. Man, we got stuff. They got so many cobwebs and stuff on it. You can't even tell what's on the pallet. I could fill a truck up once a week easy and make a couple grand. And I wish somebody would say something to me. See, that's what happened. When you don't treat your employees right, they get into like kamikaze mode, man. Where they just stop caring, man. You know, it's just like if you're in a relationship, 
Hey, you treat your woman wrong, man. Like, every time you come home, hey, babe, how you doing? <sighs> Dang, I just got in the house. Let me, let me relax for a minute. Dang. Or every time she asks a question, <sighs> you know. It, 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 we y'all y'all know what I'm talking about y'all y'all fellas out there y'all done done it cause I done done it so but when you do that stuff eventually what happened is your girl get into kamikaze mode I don't care no more ah I, I kill you I kill me I kill us all <laughs> you better not make your girl mad while she driving the car you better not Oh, uh, even while you driving the car, get off me, girl! Yeah. Kill us both, <laughs> man. Y'all know I ain't lying. Y'all know I ain't lying, man. When women get mad, they just take it too dang far, man. Why you just can't get mad like normal? Hey, man, I'm upset with you. Let's have a talk, or let's or leave me alone until I'm ready to talk. Nah, yeah. <laughs> Oh man, women so silly. <laughs> women know they they know they crazy too, man. That's the crazy part about it. You know you crazy. Well, my lady, man, I know when she be on dummy too. She know like if I'm uh, I was I was back in my little office, man. You know, working on some uh, working on some paintings or something, doing something, man. And uh. I could hear her feet on, on her coming down to the office. And I said, ah, oh, here we go. She said, I'm in here enjoying my, um, my little, uh, my little, my little office room. And here she come. And when I looked at her, she was standing in the doorway all twisted up like this. And that's how I know when she finna be on dummy, man. If she just standing straight, then I said, okay, it's gonna be all right. But she came to the doorway all twisted up. I said, yep, here we go. <laughs> Here we go. Um, yeah, so treat your folk right, and they won't get to that kamikaze mode where they don't care no more. Because they feel like the only way they can get back at you is by hurting you. So they're going to do something and not going to stop until they hurt you. I was checking my email one morning. I saw a company wanted to hire me for the same thing I do at the company I'm at now. And they were starting at 15. They told me after the probation period that my pay would go up even more. And I think it capped off at a dub. For y'all that don't know, a dub is 20. So, and so a dollar, you know, folk call a dollar all kind of things, a buck or whatever, a buck or, uh, you know, whatever. Like folk, folk call a dollar or whatever, man. And then a $5 bill you call a fin, F I N. And then a 10, you call uh, a saw buck. Is it, is it a saw buck? Yeah, yeah, you call a 10 a saw buck. And then a 20, in the old times, they used to call it a double saw. But then they kind of just cut it to a dub. And 50, I don't know if it's a, is this, what, uh, what do you call 100? A C note. A hundred call a C note. A fifty nobody ever sees fifty dollar bills, so I don't even think it's a I don't even think it's a, a term, a slang term for a fifty dollar bill. Yeah. I ain't never heard nobody say half a note. Maybe I heard somebody say half a note. I don't know. I can't remember. For y'all that don't know, I'm originally from Chicago and moved down to Atlanta. That's when I became an adult. Alright, so where I'm at. So he said, yeah, they capped him off at, at, at a dub. So he said, it hurt to do it, but I turned it down because I was making so much money with my job now. Combined with my hustle, I was easily clearing two bands a week. So he said, he was making $2,000 a week, stealing that stuff. I had gone and got me a car. It was an O2 Pontiac Grand Prix. I had a Grand Am, man. I had an O2 Grand Am. Was it an O2? I think it was an O2. 
Now, if you got a Pontiac, you you hood, man. I don't even think they sell Pontiacs to people unless they black. You got to be black. Uh, in the, you got to be from the You got to be from the streets to get a Pontiac. <laughs> they don't sell Pontiacs to uh to folk in the suburbs, man. Man, I remember I'd be at work. I, you know, I'd be delivering stuff for work, man. I'd be sitting there. And, uh... I be sometimes I'd be like, man, I'm just tired of these lame, born suburban neighborhoods. You just get tired of junk sometimes. And then I mess around, and I just be like, man, I'm just. I know I'm back home when I see a Pontiac. <laughs> as soon as I see a Pontiac, I know I'm. I know I'm at home, close to home, man. So you say he bought a Grand Prix, but it was super clean. I ain't had no complaints at all. I'm gonna mess around and retire from this job. So one day, I'm on my way out with some braided copper in my bag. It had to be about 40 or 50 pounds. And uh, I saw a car in the parking lot that i never seen before. It was a nice car, too. An old school car from the 70s. I think it was an Impala. And I'm not really sure, but that mug was too sexy. I got froze there looking at it, and I almost jumped when I heard somebody say, Be careful not to look too long. She might think you want to take her from me. I turned around and seen an old white guy standing there behind me laughing like he just told the funniest joke of all time. And I kind of just laughed along with him. And uh, and I assumed he must be the owner or one of the owners of some of the company. He reached out to shake my hand and told me he was the owner and said he was sorry he'd never been around to get to know me and, and the other workers. I told him it was all right and I know he probably crazy busy a lot of the time, and he told me that wasn't no excuse, and she, he should have took time to come out and visit sometime. He was really upset with himself after he found out I've been working there for years, six years, and we ain't never met. And this was the first time I felt bad for stealing from my job. Even though this guy got plenty, it took you six years to start stealing? Like, I wonder at this point how long he had been stealing. Because if it was me and I was going to steal, I would have been stealing in the first. Shoot, I would have been stealing in the first day. <laughs> I would have been stealing during orientation. <laughs> shoot, I would have been at orientation clearing that mug out. Y'all know what I should do. I, just, I wonder how much people would pay me to call and hear me talk and tell stories to them. How much would y'all pay for that? I should ask her that she want to see me record. Anyway. So if open, some of y'all be talking to me on Instagram, man. Shout out to the ones who be talking to me on Instagram at Hood Horror. I had a cousin, man. Same cousin from the story earlier. He said he worked at an auto parts store. He said he was stealing so much he quit. <laughs> he said he was stealing so much he just quit, man. Because they was getting ready to audit the store or so. <laughs> He just quit. <laughs> he said folk was just walking in there. Folk was just walking in there getting stuff and walking out. <laughs> and then my cousin, that same cousin, my uncle, the same uncle, and my other uncle, and my daddy, they all worked at a Taco Bell. And my daddy was the manager. I wish so bad. That I could see what I, that I wish there was video or a camera crew that that followed them in that Taco Bell. <laughs> he said they be coming home with ground beef, they be coming home with uh, taco bread, they be coming home with cheese, everything. They said they used to make them, they used to make stuff. They the way, <laughs> all the stuff that Taco Bell got now is stuff that they created. <laughs> Man, I, I'm telling y'all, man, I wish that, uh, it's a shame, man, because it was so much fun, man, and that's, that's what I, that's what hood horror 
is like inspired by. It was so much fun when I used to watch the adults get together and talk about the past, man. Seeing my uncle and my cousins, my daddy, when they got together, last time they got together, it was just... And, you know, I'm talking about, like, a couple of years ago. Like, it ain't like, not even when I was a kid. I'm talking about, like, just even a couple of years ago. It was amazing to see them sitting at that table talking about the past, man. You know, it was amazing, man. And you, yeah, it'll never happen again. <laughs> not with that particular set of family members. You know, things happen, man, but. It's a shame, man. I wish um things weren't like they is, man. So um He said it's the first time he felt bad from Stella. And even though this guy got plenty of money, but I don't know. Maybe he just reminded me of my granddaddy. You know it's always tough to do some dirt to old people. Even back when I was a kid, I would uh even back when I was a kid this old couple down the street would leave their basement window open and some of my folks would go in their house to steal whenever they leave the house and I could never bring myself to go up in there even as a kid I had my limits he offered to take me a ride in his car and I said yeah I ran around to the passenger side and he stopped me and threw me the keys now I felt really bad but I had some keys in the ignition and got up out that parking lot like Vin Diesel on some Fast and Furious stuff he sat in the passenger seat just smiling, and it seemed like he was really happy to see somebody enjoy the car as much as he did. And me, I was a car fanatic, man. Like, it was nothing more, like, it was all about cars with me, man. I, when I saw a car, I lost my mind, especially something old, because I used to watch the dope boys ride around in their nice old cars. So I always wanted something old my whole life. I drove around for like 15 to 20 minutes before I took it back to the warehouse. I got out the car. He asked me what I considered taking a promotion or work on the administrative side, getting up off the warehouse floor. I didn't say yeah. I just ran up to him and hugged him. He told me call him in the morning on my way in so we could meet up and have some breakfast while he broke the new position down to me. And I got in my car and left and made it halfway down the block. When I realized that I left the bag with the cop in it in the back seat of his car. Okay, that was dumb. He said that bag, how much he said that thing weighed? Uh, okay, he said I'm on my way and I had about 40 or 50 pounds worth. He must have meant 40 or 50 dollars worth of uh copper okay that's probably what he meant so 40 50 that ain't much uh what's that what's 50 divided what's 40 divided by five eight pounds so yeah like eight pounds eight pounds that ain't a lot okay but it might be a lot somebody pick your book bigger man it's kind of heavy but anyway when i got close to the car i realized oh wait huh where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Okay, so I turned around so quick, I ain't even looked to see if it was any cars coming, and headed back to the warehouse. He was just getting in his car and had just pulled off, and I followed behind him and was trying not to get too close to him. But then I was just thinking, like, man, I got all I gotta do is just tell him I forgot my bag. But then what if he put his hand on it and see that it's kind of a little heavier than it should be? I can't believe I was uh, stupid. I'm just sit up here and put stuff I'm stealing from, you know, put stuff that I'm stealing from him in his car. That's bad when you become a simp for somebody car so hard that you forget you're in the middle of committing a crime. So I followed him and stopped at a gas station. It was an old raggedy gas station, like one that's been around since the cotton picking days or something. He pulled in and got out to go get the gas. And I pulled around the side to the station and got out real quick trying to see if he left the car door open to see if I could grab my stuff real quick. I ran over there, but he had the door locked. I was too mad. I made my way to the other side, and the door was open, but I heard him leaving out saying bye to the clerk, so I ran and hid behind the pump. He put the gas in and got in the car and pulled off. 
See, man, now you didn't got so deep. <laughs> it's like if you would have just stopped him right there, you could have got your bag, probably. Yeah, uh, you know, you could have just stopped him right then. But then, when you didn't sat there and followed him, down, now you didn't follow to the gas station. You still didn't stop him. So, uh, so now you sitting up here, uh, finna chase him down some more. I guess he gonna go all the way to the house in a minute. So, I ran back to my car. And not too far down the road, there was a car sitting on the side of the road. I seen him start to slow down because the car had these emergency lights on. And it was kind of dark, but I think the hood of the car was up. He pulled up behind the car and I stopped the way back and turned my lights off. I saw him get out of his car and start looking around trying to figure out what happened. But I don't think that whoever the car belonged to was there. It was getting darker and darker and it was getting harder to see. I got out of my car and I decided I could probably make a quick run and get my bag out the back seat. When I got close to the car, I realized that it was somebody in the woods. I was about 20 or 30 feet behind boss man car and boss man was about 50 feet in front of his car, checking on the, stop, on the stopped car. The guy in the woods was facing boss man just staring at him. And I couldn't tell any details about him, but I could tell that he was pretty tall. I froze up because I just couldn't figure out what this guy would be doing. And it wasn't like he was just being nosy because the way he was standing there was real creepy. Like, if I'm just in the woods being nosy, I'd probably be leaning on a tree or something or just kind of off in a cut. But this guy was standing straight up, not moving at all. Matter of fact, forget all that. What is he even doing in the woods in the first place? We on a little country highway and ain't no reason to just be walking through the woods at night. It ain't like we near a store or near some houses or something. Then I heard boss man scream and jump back from the car. It looked like he had blood on his hands and knees from kneeling down in the car. And he tried to wipe the blood off him but ended up just spreading it all over him. And he started making his way back to his car. But right out the corner of my eye, I seen the tall man moving to him fast as lightning. And boss man turned to him right at the last second and let out a quick holler right before he was starting. It dragged off into the woods. He kicked and screamed the whole way. I was a straight statue. I couldn't even breathe out. I just had air stuck in my chest and I could feel the pressure building in my lungs, but I couldn't do anything but stand there froze. Finally, my chest released the air and I could move again. And I could hear my boss man screaming, but the scream sounded like they was getting farther and farther away. I, I wanted to go help him. I wanted to so bad. And I stood there thinking it over. But the way I seen him dragged away, there was no way I could fight that tall man. I turned to my car and then I remembered the book bag. I had to get it because it's going to get traced back to me and then I'm going to end up getting blamed for boss man disappearance. So I turned around and ran to his car and grabbed that bag and ran like I never have before. I got in my car, started it, and put it in drive, all in one move. I drove past boss man car and the abandoned car and as soon as I passed it, I was looking to the woods and I seen the tall man coming out the woods moving at me full speed. I screamed and put my pedal to the floor. When I got home, I started crying like I never cried before. I couldn't even get out of the car. Every piece of water in my body was coming up out of my eyes. I had to go to work the rest of the week. Or what am I gonna do? There's no way I'm gonna be able to handle this. They gonna ask questions. Somebody probably already called the police. I know they did. I cried all night. I only worked there for about another few months. A lot of people took time off or left because of the drama. I never stole from that company or any other company I ever worked for. And not because it's the wrong thing to do. But because of the guilt of seeing that old man being dragged off to die by the tall man. 
and never speaking up because I was scared of facing the consequences of my actions. Hmm. You know, some people probably have judged this guy, and that's fair. He deserved it. I'm going to tell y'all one thing. A lot of times when we're young, we don't understand how bad something really could end up being. A lot of things we do not really understand. I don't really understand that there's consequences behind it. Your brain ain't developed enough to understand the consequences that come with the actions that you done did. Just some real stuff. Some folk might call it an excuse, but it's the truth. It ain't no excuse, it's the truth. When you're young, your brain is not able to understand how dangerous things is. They say because of the frontal inner cortex of your brain ain't developed till about 25. (coughs) And even still they say that it's only developed. (sighs) And it still might not be developed right. If uh, you don't eat right and stuff like that. So man. All I can say. No, is uh, <laughs> all I can say is uh, young folk, young folk who listen, think about the stuff you do before you do it, because whatever, whenever you do wrong, it's gonna be a consequence of it. And if somebody end up getting hurt or dying after something you did wrong, you're gonna have to live with that guilt, and you don't want to live with that guilt. You know, it's people today that did something wrong in the past, and then they come to Jesus. And when they come to Jesus, they repent and be baptized, and they change. But guess what? In the back of their mind, they still haunted by the things that they done did. Even to this day, there's things I did in the past that still... You know, it's like PTSD. It's still bother you that you did that stuff. Whether it's something really bad, or whether it's something small, whatever, it still bother you that you did it. There's girls that I played, the girls who I mistreated, and girls who are, are women I, that are, I lied to, deceived, made promises to that weren't for real. Maybe I thought they was for real at the time or whatever, but bottom line is, still broke it. It still bothers me. Anyway, I got another story. I got another story. But before I tell this story, I'm going to tell y'all. I thank y'all for y'all's support. And, uh... For y'all that can, uh, financial donations would be amazing, man. Dollar sign hood horror is my cash app. And here also is a link to my PayPal. Any help y'all can do, it's appreciated, man, because uh, I need all the help that I can get, man. <laughs> I need all the help I can get, man. It's... It's hard to keep this thing going, man. It's hard when you got 3,000 subs and you put a video out and you're lucky if you get 300 views on it. And then you're lucky if you get 50 likes on it. And it's hard to keep going because without y'all, man, I'm just, if y'all don't watch, what am I? What am I? You know? It's the same thing with Hollywood. When Hollywood spent all that money to put a movie together and don't nobody go see the movie, somebody finna lose their job. Somebody ain't finna be working in this town again, man. You know, look at when they had these big summer blockbusters, they done spent $100, $200 million on. They expecting to get a billion dollars back. Like with this new superhero movies, man, when they do these movies, 
they ain't expecting to break even. Or we spent 200 on it and we're going to get 200 back. No. They, if they spent 200 million, they expecting to get a billion dollars back. And if they don't, it's going to be considered a flop and somebody going to lose their job. Not saying they ain't going to never work again, but you ain't going to work here again, man. It's going to be on their permanent record, man. It's going to be on your resume. You're part of that flop. So it's the same thing when I do these videos, man. Uh, if don't nobody watch, it's a flop, man. It's a flop. And in some videos, man, some of these videos, y'all, I just put a lot of time in, man. Like that pimp story I just did. Bro, that thing, it's an hour and 20 minutes. It took a lot to get that. In the word, the, the writing, it took a lot, man. So, uh, it's, it's, it do kind of hurt, man, when you done spent all that time, sacrificed other things and other people, and then you only get 200 some views on it, boy, with 3,000 subscribers. So I don't know if it's y'all fault, or I don't know if it's YouTube fault, but uh, just just come check, at least come check on me once a week. You know, I usually release once a week. I'm trying to release every Sunday, at least on YouTube. But just come check on me sometime, man, and uh, see if I don't put anything out. Go to the search bar and type in Hood Horror, man, because uh, we got to take it. We got to take the power away from YouTube, man. So only 22% of my people then hit the bell. Y'all got to hit the bell and take the power away from YouTube and put the power in our hands. Somebody told me I should have a million subscribers. The only way it's going to happen, man, is with y'all support. So, just hear what it is, man. Uh, thank y'all for thank y'all for supporting, man. I need it, man, because uh, I'm not going to lie to y'all. It be times where I be like, maybe I should just go buy a truck and be a truck driver. Maybe I'm, I got a little raw talent or whatever, but maybe I don't know how to harness it enough to make something out of it. That's just how I be feeling, y'all. But anyway, I got another story about Slender Man. Let's see how long this story is. Hmm, it's pretty long. Now, um, this one starts off. I stay out in the country in a real rural area in a small little house that my granddaddy left for me. I stayed in the city, but I used to visit my grandparents in the summertime. It was fun when I was younger, you know, running around with the animals, playing ball with some of the cousins and other kids around, you know. But when I got older, though, it wasn't much fun as it was since I had to really uh, work around the farm. And I couldn't wait till I was old enough when my parents didn't force me to go anymore. And my granddaddy would call me and try to get me to come and see him. And uh, he'd be nice about it. He didn't just call me cussing me out or anything like that. He'd just call me and be like, hey, what's going on there, city boy? The weather been real nice around here this year. You would love it if you came down. And we got watermelon the size of truck tires. Sweeter than Kool-Aid. Look, granddaddy would have had me right then, boy. You got watermelon the size of, when it's sweeter than Kool-Aid, I know it. I'm coming because people don't lie about watermelon. That's one thing people never lie about is watermelon. If somebody said watermelon sweet, it's sweet. And if they say it ain't sweet, it ain't sweet. I ain't had a good watermelon in so long, man. The last time I had a good watermelon, it'd be like 2016 or something, man. But you know, I'm you. Know, I know where they at now, though. I found them good watermelons at Publix. You just can't go to the cheap grocery stores. You got to go to the higher end grocery stores. So I have had some good watermelon this recently. I just had to find out where they was. But one time I went to the farmers market, and this Mexican guy he couldn't speak no English, but he had this watermelon that mug was 
that mug was this big, man. And then, uh, look at me, I'm, when I get old, I'm going to be lying to my grandkids, telling them, you know, they be like telling fish stories and the fish be getting bigger and bigger and the fish, I'm going to be telling watermelon stories. Yeah, boy, when I was young, man, I had a watermelon this big. I ate all of it. <laughs> when I get old, I'm going to be extra. Everything I say going to be the most serious thing in the world when I get old. Man, I, I, man, I, I, I knock an old lady down for some watermelon. <laughs> I don't care. He to call me black, call me, uh, call me what you want to call me. Big black lip, big lip, wide nose. Call me what you want. If I get my hand on some watermelon, it's going down. I remember one time I was getting ready to go go home, man. We leaving from the camp, and my guy he gave me uh he gave me a, a whole big slice of watermelon, man. And he was like, "Hey, man, eat this when you get home." I'm like, "You crazy in the mud? I'm gonna eat this junk on the way home." So I'm driving in the car eating watermelon. I pull up at the light, folk looking at me. I look at them and just spit some seeds out. I ain't, I'm lying. I eat the seeds. Yeah, I eat the seeds, man. I'm, I'm, I, I never spit the seeds out. The, the seeds go down with the rest of the watermelon, man. Remember that episode of Rugrats when Tommy or somebody thought they got a seed in their stomach? I think Angelica came and told them watermelon was going to grow in their stomach. So... <laughs> Good memories, good memories. Now, I ain't gonna lie to you. When he would talk about that watermelon, it took everything I had, <laughs> drop everything, <laughs> head to that farm. But I knew if when I when I went, that Granddad was gonna work me to death. But a few weeks ago, Granddad had died, and Grandma already died back when I was a teenager. But now they were both gone, and I went to the funeral, but I couldn't go up there and look at him laying in the casket. I felt like I helped put him there. Maybe I'm being hard on myself, but the thing about it is, I know he died from working himself to death. When the sun was up, he was up. And he didn't sit down until the sun went down. And he didn't make enough to hire a bunch of help, so he'd get on that tractor and ride all day. It was amazing, actually, just seeing how much work one man can do. But I knew he couldn't keep that up for long. Now he gone at the age of 63. This is the time when the average person is retiring from their job and granddad was just getting started working because of the Walmarts and stuff coming in and starting their own farms. Now it was harder than hard for regular folks like granddad to stay afloat. And granddad was doing better than I thought he was because his house and farm was paid off and he had some money in the bank to go along with it. I don't understand how things just always seem to work themselves out right at the last moment, but I had just lost my job due to the pandemic, and my lease ran out, and now I was waiting on unemployment. I was living in my car just hoping that the Department of Labor could get back with me soon because I was lower than I ever been. My parents was old school, and they didn't believe in helping with financial stuff or even giving me a couch to lay on. I could come in during the day and eat, but once they were ready to go to bed, I had to find somewhere to go. And I really felt bad about how I did my granddad. My parents are my parents, and they treat me like I'm just some kind of Negro off the street that just shows up looking for something to eat. They know it's a pandemic out here, but I ain't gonna argue about it. I just did what I had to do. I moved out to the country and stayed in my grandparent farm. I remember when I first moved out of my parents' house, how crazy it was living by myself. It's one of the spookiest things ever because every sound you hear sounds like a serial killer coming to my room to open up my stomach with a rusted knife and eat the insides. And the farm was a hundred times worse because that old house popped and creaked and groaned and moaned and sometimes it even seemed like the house was outright screaming and hollering in the middle of the night. That'd be a good little movie, this the screaming house. Look, uh something I was finna say. What the heck was it, man? What was I finna say? What am I, okay. Oh, about the parents, yeah, look. 
parents, 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 parents. I'm a parent too. Ain't nothing wrong with putting your dang foot down, man. A eagle makes her nest with thorns. And the reason that eagle make her nest with thorns is because as them baby eagles grow, <coughs> they get tired of getting poked by them thorns. And after they're getting poked so long, they eventually get up out of that nest. But if she don't make her nest out of thorns, they going to keep growing and growing until they push her out of her own nest. And I'm going to leave it right there. Ain't nothing wrong with putting some thorns in your nest to make them eagles uncomfortable. <coughs> uh... I stayed up all night the first week. It was impossible to sleep. I don't know how folks out here in the country could sleep. The animals outside just be going straight crazy at night. Every night I hear different animals. Some of them seem like they just came by my house and just stood outside screaming just to mess with me. And one night a tree fell in the middle of the night. And I thought it was Jesus coming back to get all his folk. I jumped up out the bed and started praying, man. It sounded like somebody drove a dang Mack truck through the front door. But I guess Jesus was looking out for me because he just fell right between the house and the barn and didn't damage him. And after a few weeks went by, I started getting more and more comfortable. I was learning to enjoy all the crickets and cicadas out there spitting the hottest verse they ever wrote all night long, every single night. <laughs> but then one night I got up because I heard some coyotes or something. Uh, making some more noise than usual. And I went to the window to look out. And I seen four or five of them staring into the field just barking and stuff. And off in the field I saw something but I couldn't tell what it was. It was just a shape. But really it could have been. I could have been looking at a tree for all I know. And I stared at it for like 15 minutes I think. Waiting to see if it was going to move. It seemed like a tree but it never moved in the wind like the other trees. I had to pee real bad, and I left real quick to go pee. When I get, get back, I ain't see the shape no more. And it was really messing with me. So that's one of the nights I stayed up. And my sleep schedule was so messed up at this point that I wouldn't even remember what day it was most of the time. I ain't feel comfortable going to sleep until the sun came up. And it really upset me because I was just starting to get, you know, four nights of sleep. Now I just sit up all night with this slow internet trying to stream King of the Hill and American Dead. That'd be some good TV watching right there, boy. Man, I'm so upset, man. I just found out that Brooklyn Nine-Nine is one of the funniest things I've ever seen, man. And then I just found out that Curb Your Enthusiasm is one of the funniest things I've ever seen, man. Man, I... I got to start giving most stuff a chance, man. I don't know if it just be because I don't know if it's just some prejudices I got. <laughs> but I need to start watching different stuff, man. That's some funny freaking stuff, man. I'm like, man, I'm watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine. And I'm on a plane because I be on a plane for my J-O-B. And uh, I'm watching, you know, they got the TVs in the back of the head in the front of you. So you, everybody got their own little TV. Man, I'm sitting there, the laugh people looking at me and stuff. You know, I don't give a crap. I be sitting on the plane looking crazy anyway. I be sitting there like this. And then uh, people walk up. And, when, and I be on like on the aisle seat. And they got to get over to their seat. And they walk up. I be looking like this. And they, they just go. Um, I be like, I'm like, yeah, come on, sit down. <laughs> Yeah, come on over here and sit down. It's okay. You know, I like messing with folks. My lady be telling me cut my beard and cut my hair and stuff. Man, I, I be telling her I do horror. I got to look crazy, man. I can't be looking normal. What am I going to look normal for? I need to look spooky, man. Like, 
You know, people need to see me in a dark alley and turn around, man. Not walk to me. They need to turn the heck around. Would you would you walk up to the crypt keeper if you seen him in a dark alley? No. So I I want you I want you to walk up on me either. Anyway. Uh so when the sun came up, I grabbed one of granddaddy guns and headed out to the field and looked where I seen the shape. <clears throat> and I didn't see a tree that looked like what I saw. I had to just be tripping. And maybe it was something that blew and got stuck in the ground or up against a tree or something. And maybe it was just a, a dang bear or something crazy like that. Or a big old moose or something came through and sat down and rested. <laughs> if the coyotes saw a moose, they probably would go extra crazy since they're so big and crazy looking with them big old sticks sticking up out their head. And then I thought about it. There ain't no moose in no dang South Georgia. At least I don't think there's no mooses here. They be up in the mountains and stuff. So it can't have been no moose. And I ain't know uh, what was out there that night. But it messed with me for days, man. I slept during the day and spent the night looking for that thing. And the animals were out like normal every night. And it seemed like I was the only one still thinking about that shape. Now, eventually, I got my sleep habit back to normal, and I was able to sleep like a normal person. And the house was so lonely, I went and got a dog. And it was young, but it wasn't no puppy, because I wanted something that was mature enough to look out in case something happened. Now, this was a good idea, but bad at the same time, because it was super annoying, because the dog spent the whole night perking his ears up like he heard something and staring at the door like somebody was about to knock. And I would stare at the door with him, just waiting for the knock or bang on the door. And I had neighbors, but if somebody ever came on some dummy stuff, it's a chance my neighbors might not even hear me unless I get to shoot. You know? But shoot, depending on what time it is, if you shooting, the folk going to probably think it's just some young boys shooting at some cans or something, man. So, that ain't no guarantee either. And even if it was late at night, they figure you were shooting at a fox that was trying to get up in your chicken coop or something, you know. Now, if you ain't noticed, I tend to overthink things a lot. But the night came where all my suspicion really came for real. It was trash day and I forgot to take the cans to the street. And I grabbed them up real quick and made my way to the front door and headed to the street. The driveway was about 50 yards, and the cans was full and heavy, so I decided to throw it in the pickup and take it down. After I dropped the can at the street, I looked across the street to my neighbor's house and looked up at the attic window. Their house was old and getting kind of raggedy since they was too old to really keep it up. But in the window, it looked like um, I saw a head, but not a face. It was just like seeing one of those mannequin heads that my mama would use for her wigs, but it was connected to a body though a long skinny body looked like it was dressed in all black with a piece of white showing around the neck area it looked like this thing was wearing a suit it was the freakiest dang moment of my whole young black life now i stood there staring at that shape until i heard the horn of the garbage truck from the driver telling me to get out the way so he could pull up I jumped and got ready to throw down, man. I was ready to fight, man. But I got a hold of myself real quick so I wouldn't look crazy. And I stepped back out of the way and waved at them and looked back at the house, at the attic window, and the mannequin man was gone. I tried all kinds of different ways to help myself calm down and stop tripping about what I think I saw, but I couldn't. So I jumped in the truck, went to the house, got one of the pistols, put the dog in the truck, and headed across the street. And when I got there, I watched the window the whole time. And before I even knocked on the door, Mama Winfield came out the door. And uh, she came to the, out of the door like she was meeting one of them people with them big old checks. You know that win um, $5,000 a week for the rest of your life, which is a scam because you have never actually seen anybody win that for real. And I made like 50 emails and entered with one of them every week. <laughs> and I entered more, and they just kept trying to sell me stuff, so they junk, just some junk. But anyway, she gave me a hug between them two yard dogs that she had running loose in her front yard. Like she ain't seen me in years. You always say, boy, yeah, 
She has them two yard dogs running around her front yard. <laughs> I just saw her last trash day. With about 10 or 15 minutes of her trying to hook me up with her daughter, who was in jail for beating her last boyfriend and near death, I finally asked her about the thing in the window, and she looked at me like I was crazy. Then I told her maybe it was some kind of raccoon or something in the attic. <coughs> and I told her I'll go up there and bash this cute little head in. And at first she was kind of hesitant, but then she said, I know you got some kind of pictures and keepsakes and stuff up there. And I know you don't want old Cooney to chew him up and put his little raccoon hands on him. <laughs> Boy, hey, he ain't lying, man. Raccoon. I, imagine, like, if you were barbecuing and you had some ribs and you just ready for them ribs. You didn't got them all. And then you see a raccoon on by the grill and he didn't touch your ribs with his raccoon hands. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't eat it after that. I can't eat after the raccoon hand, man. Stupid little hand. Like, yeah, man, I couldn't eat after the raccoon hand. You look like they ain't never washed their hands, boy. So after that, she took off up to the attic and let the ladder down and told me to go up there and peel his muffin cap back. So I was more scared than I've ever been at anything in any situation, but I had to figure out what was going on. So I grabbed my pistol and looked around the attic. And I ain't see nothing but dust and junk. So I flipped the light switch and waited for an extra light. But the light never came on. The sun rays coming through the window were, uh, where I thought I seen the head gave me enough light to find a big tall man if he was up there. I looked around every corner of this junk maze. Almost hoping that I would see somebody up here just so I could blow his head off and get over, get on, get over all this. And I could just go home and give me some sleep. And then out the corner of my eye, I saw him. I saw him standing up about a foot taller than me with a dusty black suit on. I turned and put one in him. Pow! And Miss Winfield came running to the attic trying to figure out how I went from using a stick to using a gun. She hollered at me and popped me in the head. I told her I got scared and thought it was a whole man finna jump me, but now I realized it was just a mannequin. And I asked her, has she moved it today? And she said, no, she ain't been in the attic in months. Is it possible that maybe the sun was hitting the window in some kind of way that the reflection of the mannequin was showing? I asked her, had the animals been going crazy at night? And she said, yeah. I asked her, was that normal every now and then? And she said, only when the skinny mane come around. Dick. <laughs> When I heard this, I almost fell. My knees bucked a little bit, and I felt like a rush of fear moved from my back up to my brain. I always wondered how I would react to one of those horror movie-like moments in real life. And all I could say was, What you talking about, Miss Winfield? Then she broke everything down to me. Well, son, I know how your grandparents never told you about the skinny man. You know what? Your grandparents didn't really play that spooky stuff. I remember now. I'm surprised none of the other kids or anything talked about it. And when she said that, my mind jumped back to when I was like 10 and came to the farm to visit one summer. And all the family was there and we did a big bonfire type thing. Where am I at? Where am I at? I remember staring at the fire so long that the image got stuck in my eyes everywhere I looked. I did this for about a whole three or four hours while all my cousins and stuff were storing stuff in the fire, seeing how it would burn. Then we had an uncle that was always drunk. I ain't know it at the time. I just thought he was crazy. But he got all the kids to sit down for a minute so he could tell us a story. He said he was going to tell us about the skinny man. He said, if you ever come outside at night, late at night, when all the foxes are asleep, you better watch your back. It's a man who walks around the trees, a skinny man, who looks like one of the trees. He about seven feet tall and wears a suit, a black suit that's old and raggedy. It looked like he dug up a dead body from the graveyard over yonder and stole a dead man's suit. And the worst part about him is the man's face. He ain't got no hair, no ears, no nose, no mouth, no eyes, no nothing. After he said that, 
One of the big cousins ran up and scared the dog mess out of us, and we all ran off screaming. And Medea came out the house hollering at them for scaring us little kids. I heard her talking, but I didn't. I heard her talking, but I don't think I heard anything else she said until she shook me a few times. When I snapped out of it, I told her I saw the skinny man in the yard one night, and she just shook her head. We all thought that he was just an old wise tale, but old timers just told us kids to keep us from wandering too far from the house. I didn't see him myself till I got in my forties. All I can say is leave him alone and on those nights stay in the house. Don't open the door, don't open the window, don't even look outside when you hear them animals carrying on like that. Do you hear me, boy? And I was scared to tell her that I saw him in her attic window because I didn't care to, you know, I didn't want to scare her. Maybe that was selfish, but I'm sorry. It just is what it is. Maybe I should tell her, though, but it's no telling what this man might do or can't, what he's capable of. I asked her, has he ever hurt anybody? And she said, it's hard to say because he's really capable, uh, what he's really capable of, because nobody ever come back and said that, you know, they he attacked them. Anybody that ever disappeared, the skinny man would get blamed. It was the perfect excuse for some deadbeat daddy to get away from his family. And all I can tell you, child, is to stay in that house whenever you hear those animals acting a fool. If he lets you see him, that ain't what he usually does. He must really want you. So now for her coming and trying to tell me the skinny man must really want me, I started to tell her, well, he must want you because he in your attic. You old stinking... <laughs> <laughs> he in your attic, so if he want me, he want you too, so. <sighs> I went home and sat in the living room, holding a rifle in my lap like I was waiting for it to get dark. So I can go out and take the skinny mane on. When it got dark, I started getting hungry. I went to the kitchen and cooked me up some. As soon as I got done cooking, I sat down to eat when all of a sudden the animals got to hollering. I already knew what time it was, so I grabbed the rifle and got Doggo and ran upstairs to look outside, see if I could see him. I could see the chickens in their fence going nuts, and I saw some foxes run away from the woods. I turned the lights off so he couldn't see me in the room and opened the window and used the window pane to help me steady the rifle. I was just scanning the woods trying to find him. I knew he was hiding in those trees. I thought I saw him. It was hard to tell, but I wanted to make sure that he was there for real before I shot at him. I didn't want him to get up out of here without catching one of these slugs. I looked up at the sky and seen that the, uh, the clouds was covering the moon and they was moving quick. It was about to be bright, so I knew I was about to see him. When those clouds moved, I got a good look around the woods, and in the middle of all those dark trees, I saw the white of his shirt. It was him, standing at the edge of the woods, and my heart started beating fast. And I could feel fear all up in my head and in my hands, and I couldn't stop my hands from shaking enough to aim the rifle, and he was too far away to risk a shot right now. So I sat there for a few minutes, trying to gain control of myself, but I couldn't. And I slapped myself in the face trying to slap some sense into myself. I was about straight, but then the dog kept barking. I kept hitting at him, trying to get him to shut up, but he refused to listen. So I finally got fed up and turned around and saw what he was so turned up about. It was smoke coming up through the doorway. And I turned around real quick, wondering what was going on, then it hit me. I forgot to turn the stove off and left the food on the aisle. I ran downstairs, went into the kitchen, and seen flames shooting up from the stove and burning the cabinets. The stove was gas, and I knew if I didn't do something quick, this whole place was going to explode. The fire was so out of hand, I had to get uh, something to really fight it with. And I grabbed the extinguisher, but it was caked in dirt, and when I tried to shoot it, it just made a fizzing noise and nothing came out. And I ran to the sink to fill up a picture to um, throw on a fire, but at this point in my life, I didn't know that you ain't supposed to put water on a grease fire. Now the fire exploded and was everywhere. 
I had to go outside to get the water hose. I ran out the back door and made my way to the gas line and shut it off. Then made my way to the hose when I heard footsteps coming towards me real quick. I turned around just in time to see his hand reaching out to grab me around my neck. His fingers was long and skinny like knives. I didn't have a rifle, but I had a pistol on me. I pulled it out of my waistband and put it to his plain face and shot. He let me go and my dog came running up and jumped into him. And a dog had my back for real, for real. And I got loose from him and put a few more bullets in him and he fell to the ground, moved a little bit, and then just went limp. I turned to the house and saw black smoke all up in the air. And I ran to the back door and saw the entire kitchen was an inferno. There's no way this little garden hose was finna do anything. I couldn't even get close enough to shoot due to the heat. I still ran to the hose to try anyway, and I grabbed it and pulled up my phone and called police. I already knew it was going to be like 15 minutes before they got to me, and I don't think this old house could take it. While I was doing my best I could to fight this fire, I turned to look at the skinny man, and he wasn't there no more. I know I had shot him about seven or eight times. This wasn't just no man in no mask. He had to be something else. And I put another clip in that pistol and got ready for him to come back. And I heard my dog whimper and I turned to see him being slung around by the skinny man. I dropped the hose and ran towards him and put more bullets in him. And it didn't even make him flinch. But I got my dog loose and ran towards the truck. And I jumped in the truck and grabbed the key and kept hitting uh, the key that I kept hitting, and I started the truck up. And I opened the door for my dog, but he never got in. He was still fighting that monster out there. I got out the truck. I was scared, but I ain't no punk, so When it's time to fight, I'm going to fight. And when I got back to the house, it was halfway gone. Everything my grandparents fought for was gone. All the history, all the memories, all of it was gone. And I looked at the fire the same way I looked at the bonfire as a kid. I looked at it so long that the flame stayed in my eyes everywhere I looked. I felt guilty. Maybe it wasn't really my fault, but if I would have been there for granddaddy, maybe they wouldn't have worked so hard. I started hearing fire trucks. They was right down the street. And I turned to see them pulling down the driveway along with police cars. Then I heard my dog barking. And I turned to the other side of the field trying to find him. And I lifted up my rifle, knowing that the skinny man had walked off with him. And when I finally saw him, I stopped running and got ready to fire, but the police tackled me to the ground. I screamed for them to let me go and told them that he had my dog, but they weren't listening to me. Out in the field, I could see him taking my dog away. And I could see him turn to me with his shoulders going up and down like he was laughing at me. I tried to tell them to look, but it was too dark. They couldn't see what I could see. And the last thing I seen was him walk away with my dog into the dark woods. Man. <sighs> Shoot. Man, that was intense, boy. I hope there wasn't no white boy. Because if that was a white boy and he lost his dog, Slender Man finna go to jail. Because the white people don't play about that. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> and I can't stand people that love animals to the point where they don't look like they love animals more than they love people. Like, look, man, I, I, mean, I used to be delivering. It'd be them little th mats on the floor, little things hanging up that said, um, dogs welcome, people tolerated, or something like that. I'm like, man, <laughs> your dog will pick a piece. Hey, let me pull up to your house with a piece of steak. Your dog, will, if you was finna fall off a cliff, and the piece of steak was sort of fall off the cliff. The dog taking the steak. <laughs> oh, man. I'm just playing, you dog lovers. You dog lovers, you. It's okay. Y'all love y'all doggos. 
<sighs> but that story was intense, man. You know, I know a couple of old old black guys, and a lot of, and I'm only saying black guys because this is what I've been around growing up. So it's probably true beyond that, but. All these old guys, man. Oh, it's going to be a day to come when when you're going to have to know how to grow your own food. and You're going to know how to build your own blah, 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 fix your own car. And look, I believe you can learn how to grow your own food, fix your own car, build your own house, whatever. If you can learn that, cool. But there will never be a day where things get so bad that we resort back to like, mad max time <laughs> like i mean not resort back but get to mad mad that we would never be in mad max times y'all and uh even if we did society gonna do the same thing it did the first time if we go back to mad max times doctors are still gonna be doctors mechanics still gonna be mechanics uh farmers still gonna be farmers Storytellers still gonna be storytellers. Musicians still gonna be musicians. Everybody's gonna do what they always done. Like the guy that's okay, let's say we did go back to Mad Max times. And let's say we get to the point where the most valuable resource is freaking corn. Right? The guy that owns a corn farm, that don't necessarily mean he knows how to run a corn empire you know it's like yeah i know how to grow it but that don't mean i know how to sell it matter of fact the guy on the farm probably don't even know how to grow it he probably hire mexican brothers or some uh, to run this farm you know what i'm saying so the people who think will always be the ones who are in control not the ones who use these it's not these, man. These is not what these are not what puts you in power. It's this man. The person that uses this is the one that's gonna always be in power, man. It just is what it is. The people that run own hospitals, you think they know how to perform surgeries? You think they know how to perform a checkup? They don't even know how to listen to your heart and know what to listen for. But they know how to run that hospital. They make more than the doctors do. So old black men, stop. <laughs> okay, stop it. Stop it. All right? Don't make kids feel bad because, like, I know, yeah, I know how to work on my car. I know how to fix stuff around the house i do yeah but then the next guy that came up different than me who never had to fix a thing who parents just paid for it to get fixed and now he pays for stuff to get fixed when it broke hey he not sitting around <laughs> on um look he ain't sitting around worried that he don't know how to fix his uh, stuff up I think I'd rather be able to pay somebody to fix something than sitting around trying to go on YouTube myself and learn how to fix it because I got to save a couple of dollars, man. So, you know, hey. I appreciate y'all, man. I thank y'all. It's tough, man, but I wouldn't have it no other way, man. I want to earn every subscriber I get. Every single subscriber I get. It's okay if I got to earn it the hard way. I'm not scared. I ain't scared of no hard work. I ain't scared of being dedicated. I ain't scared of fighting an uphill battle. So if that's what I got to do, then this is what I got to do. I hope y'all like these stories. I think in the beginning I told you that the stories was sent to me from somebody. I lied. I wrote them myself. I'm a good writer, man. Don't y'all think I'm a good dang writer, man? I be writing that junk just on my phone. I be at, I be on the plane. Just be writing, man. Junk easy for me, man. 
I could literally write on some Stephen King, like how he said, like six pages a day. <sighs> Shoot, I could do that, John. I could do more. Just sitting, having the time to sit down and do it. I can write till infinity, man. I never all right. About having the time to do it. Hey, y'all wanna know something that's good? Freaking bread and butter pickles, man. <laughs> bread and butter pickles be so good, man. And instead of using mayonnaise, use this sometime on, on a sandwich or a burger or something, man. Shit. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, I'm trying to think. Am I finna get up? If I'm finna get up off here, I'm dang near about talk my dang voice out, man. And I woke up early to get this for y'all, man. I woke up at six something. Get this for y'all, man, before, before everybody wake up. I love y'all, man. I love y'all, man. Shoot. But I have to tell you, though, um, I'm going to be transitioning soon, though. I'm going to be transitioning into um more short films than Creepypasta. Maybe I'll do Creepypasta on Twitch only or something but YouTube audience y'all I can't I can't keep it up man I can't keep it up I can't keep doing the creepy pasta cause it's just it's not paying off I need to do something that people can share with their friends and stuff you know you, you can't go to your friends and say hey look at this scary story this 30 minute scary story but you can say, hey, man, look at this little horror, little short horror movie. So, uh, I'm going to have to make the transition because I feel like I could have I could have been where I wanted to be by now. So, I got to work smarter. It's not about working harder. This blue-collar mindset, work hard, get paid next week. Got to get rid of that. You gotta develop a white collar mindset. Work hard. Get paid next year. Get paid next month. You know, from them big time contractors, man, you don't get paid till 30 days after you do the job. But a blue collar Negro, he can't understand that, man. Blue collar, like, so if you run the company, you know you ain't getting paid till next month. But you gotta pay your workers next week. I got to change my mindset. Think further down the line. YouTube paid me like $50 a month. So I got to take the power from YouTube and put the power in my hands and in y'all hands. And we get hood whore where we want it to be and not where they let it be. I believe in me. I believe in y'all. I love y'all. We going to do this thing. But... It depends, man. We see how things go. If this video do good and um, I get 100 likes or something, we'll see. But uh, I ain't gonna lie, man. That dang pimp video. That pimp video. Ooh, wait. That, that, that was almost enough to make me quit because I put everything I had into that story, y'all. I, man, I was so deep in character. I was dang there crying at the end of that story, man. That junk changed my life, man. And I wrote it. I, I got my life got changed by something I wrote, man. I don't know why I ain't ended this stream yet. I guess I want to talk to y'all. <sighs> Boy, I got a big head, man. Gosh, dog. Man, look at it. Look at how 
Look how big that mug is. It don't make no dang sense, man. Somebody hit that dang big, man. Shit. Boy, I could rob a, I could rob a bank just with my head. I don't need no gun. I just go in there. Give me all the money on my head, but somebody around this bug. Give me the money right now on my head, but somebody in this bitch. Get up. Who, who want it? Who want it? <laughs> Boy, they be throwing money. Hey, take it. Take it. Take it, take it all. <laughs> you know, sometimes, man. Uh, Sometimes, well, what I realize, man, is um, when you put your pride aside, you can really be happy. Sometimes, we can't be happy because we can't put our pride aside. And I'm talking about in your relationships. Especially as, you know, like your husband or wife. I'm happy. I don't know why I'm just telling y'all. I'm just telling y'all this. Just a little lesson to take with you. So when you leave, you can say I learned something. But when you put your pride aside. I came, I told, um, before I went to work yesterday. I told wife, I said, look. I said, look, mm hitting -hmm. up one of my fans. She said she want to listen in. Too late now, though. I'll shut this mug down now. Nah. But yeah, man, I told her, I said, look, I'm finna go. When I get home, we're gonna talk. <laughs> Whatever you wanna talk about, as long as you wanna talk. We're going to talk, so have your conversation prepared for when I get home so we could talk. <laughs> really? We're going to talk? Oh, God. Oh, oh, really? Oh. Yeah, man, so, you know. Mind control. <laughs>